In this video you will learn the differences between REST API and GraphQL. And first of all I want to compare REST and GraphQL and after that I want to share with you my way of using GraphQL that you might find appealing. So the first question is what is REST and what is GraphQL? And actually REST is a representational state transfer which actually means that we define our requests on the server. Like for example with slash artists we are getting a list of our artists, with slash artists on post request we are creating an artist, then we have a specific URL for updating artist or deleting. This is how REST API typically looks like. Now what do we have in GraphQL? As you can see here it looks like a tree with nodes that we can request. Essentially this is just a single endpoint where we provide a structure that we want to get back. And the strongest point here why all people like GraphQL so much is because it is strict and it is impossible to break. There is such tool which is called GraphQLi, this is the UI for GraphQL where we can see all requests that are created inside GraphQL with every single field and all inputs that we can provide inside which actually means you are getting out of the box when you are using GraphQL this schema of all your requests. You don't have something similar out of the box with REST, there are some third party libraries for that, but it is not an out of the box solution. In the REST realistically it is a wild west, you can change your API at any moment, sometimes it is not even a RESTful API, you can just create some URL, accept the any data and you are good to go. GraphQL on another hand is a special layer between our server and database and our client. And inside this layer with schema we are defining all our requests. One more important difference is that inside REST we simply create all our endpoints on the backend and we can't change them from the client. Inside GraphQL it is different. Yes, we create our endpoints on the backend, but we can define what data we need to get back on the client. And this is actually the first point when you need to use GraphQL. If you want from the client to request only specific data that you need and not all data like from the rest. The second point when you want to use GraphQL when you have multiple data sources, which actually means you have several endpoints and you want to collect all this data, or you have some data with references. Like for example you have a list of users and every single user has relations to his posts and every single post has relations to its category. Inside REST API you have two ways, you either make a single ugly request or you have several different requests that you need to fetch separately from the client. Inside GraphQL you can combine all these requests. The next point to use GraphQL is bandwidth problems. If we are talking about bad internet or mobile devices, it makes a lot of sense to request only data that you need or little amount of data. As with GraphQL you can specify what exactly fields you want to get from the backend, it makes a lot of sense to leverage it here. Another point to use GraphQL is when you need rapid prototyping. When we are talking about REST, if you need an additional property from the entity which is not exposed, you must change it on the server. With GraphQL it is different, your client can directly change what properties it can get from the entity, which actually means a lot of times you don't need to update your server side code, but it is enough to update your client side code to get more fields that you need. Now let's talk when does it make sense to use REST API. And actually previously you heard a lot of good things about GraphQL and you might think ok GraphQL is awesome, there is no problems in GraphQL, I should forever switch to GraphQL. This is not true and the first problem in the list is performance. We already talked how we can combine a lot of requests together, but here is the problem, your request will be extremely slow because all these requests in the database must do joins or additional queries. Which actually means with GraphQL it is extremely easy to make it slow. You must understand what you are doing from both sides, from the server and from the client to implement it correctly. And the second point is also related to the complex queries. Sometimes it is much easier to create several different endpoints to take information without combining them in a single request. 
Again, you can do it also in the GraphQL, but people with GraphQL tend to make complex things to fetch all data in a single request. Sometimes it is not the best idea. Now here I want to share with you my thoughts regarding GraphQL. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing. It helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. I personally prefer to use GraphQL for 90% of my projects, because from my perspective GraphQL is amazing in comparison to REST API. I can see full picture with all requests and all fields that are implemented inside GraphQL. This is similar to Redux structure where we see all fields inside our state. Here we see everything that is implemented inside GraphQL with GraphQL UI. And inside REST you never know how you need to use specific endpoint. With GraphQL you never need to ask your backend developer what data and in what format you must deliver there to get the correct response. It is all written inside UI. And the second point which is important, you are not forced to use GraphQL like a huge super performant tool where you want to combine lots of entities in a single request. You can still use GraphQL like REST API with different endpoints. So you kind of use REST API but just with schema and it is much easier to read and support. And actually if you are interested to know how to convert Node.js REST API to GraphQL, make sure to check this video also.